and I, Michigan's upcoming big time Big Ten opponent. All that and more coming up next. Play well. The Purdue Boilermakers don't play Spoilermakers for the Wolverines as Gary Muller, you and the Wolverines came away with a 38-13 win. Big one for you, too. No question, Jim. And we were worried exactly what you're talking about, the Spoilermakers, because they have done that before. And I was quite pleased with our defense. They had the big play potential with Eric Hunter. And they have one drive, and then at the end, we give them some good field position. They threw a deep pass they shouldn't have completed. But for the most part, I thought our defense improved and that's uh, encouraging yeah and, and and hunter is the kind of kid that can make just about anything happen you no matter what their record is that guy makes them dangerous doesn't right. he? right and to contain him and make him work at a little bit force him into a few turnovers which you'll do if you give him the short passes uh really paid off for us today offensively you had to work against a team that was determined to not let you run the football, too. Well, unlike they had played everyone else last week, they played Michigan State in a base defense. This week, they played us very, very aggressive. Here's what you do start in the game. Even though it doesn't go well for you early, defense got things started for you. No question. And when you can put pressure on a quarterback and knock him down, it really makes a difference, and Evans did that. And here we start out at the beginning of the game. I don't know. I think we threw about the first four times, Jim. That's hit, unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. We hit Derek Alexander, and then here John Vaughn uh, has a nice run for us. But uh, they forced us to throw. Then, unfortunately, right here we missed. You know, it's a shot we should make here. 46-yard field goal. We should have made that. We missed two field goals. Didn't help us. And then they come back with the football. And this is when it starts to get a little scary for you. Yeah, they, you know, they can work the ball down, and this is going to be a drive that shows you what they have the potential of doing. <clears throat> they move the ball through the air for the most part because they can't run, but this guy, Hunter, makes it all happen. Right. We were giving them a lot of those, Jim, right there, and then, but we got to make the tackle. Uh, I'll bet you 10 other times in the game we give them that throw, and they get about four or five yards on it. A couple times they drop it. Here they roll out and they get a good shot. Th those two back to back there were the four big passes they had in the game. Now they mix in the running game. This is what you can't have happen. We had a blown assignment there. A guy rushing the quarterback should have been playing the run. And that cutback play gets taken away, but they get down to the one. Hunter goes in. It's six nothing. They miss the extra, miss the extra point. Now you got to be thinking, wait a minute, what's going on? Exactly, and then we get, uh, you know, we get a couple runs here with John Vaughn inside, but as you can see it's a little sticky. Then third and three, Elvis hits Vaughn on a swing pass, which picks up a first down here, which helps us. Yeah, that's a big play in that drive. Key, yeah, we weren't uh, as effective, but we were a little better on third down today than uh, statistically than what I thought. I think we were seven out of 13. John Vaughn run a little harder, too. I think John's at full strength now with his ankle and everything, and... Uh, He's going to continue to get better. You go 6-3 uh, with the field goal. I know you wanted to get more, but couldn't. Then you come back, and again, the defense takes over. Yeah, and all those points, Jim, are, are helpful. Here's uh, forcing the quarterback to throw off rhythm a little bit, and Eric Anderson trying to be that ex-fullback he was in high school. <laughs> and you knew you needed that, didn't you? The pressure to force him to make bad Oh, throws. yeah, and we knew he would do that, but just don't let him hit the long ones like in the fourth quarter last year. Here's John on a nice run on a counter. This is what happens too, Jim, when you break loose and they're playing all that bump and run man to man and you do crack the line of scrimmage, you're gonna get big plays. And this is exactly what you're talking about. They're really, the safeties are nowhere in the picture right, right. now. Uh, Greg Skrepnik knocking a guy down there and then John does a good job here. He spins off this, this is good, good effort right here, lunging forward to get down to the two. Get down to the two yard line, you go to the wishbone and boy, Alan Jefferson had a quite a day. Yeah, we, uh, Allen runs well out of this formation, particularly the sweep, and we like to use him down here if the defense dictates. And he had three touchdowns. Three touchdown puts you up 10-6. Come back, they get the ball, but the defense comes back right. at them. T.J. Osmond on the sack here, and, you know, if you can get four of these, we wanted four sacks, and we wanted four big turnovers, and we got that. They come back again, go to the air, but again, pressure, and you get the stop on the middle. This is what has hurt you against Iowa and a lot of teams, and this time you put a stop to it. Short pass, but the first guy, like Eric Anderson, makes a tackle. Then this is a big play. These two kicking plays back-to-back -back here where uh, Ritter blocks the punt again and Dwayne Ware picks it up. I say again because that happened in the previous game. And that was a designed play. Those yes. are designed blocks that happened that way. Right. 
And uh, our special teams, uh, for the most part, Jim, have been excellent. And uh, I say that with a little hesitation because the minute you start telling you <laughs> everybody they're good, but Ware picks up the next kickoff, and then it gives us an opportunity to go in and score. We had a holding penalty here after we got down inside to five, came back, and there's man-to-man -man again, and uh, this time Desmond beats him. Yeah, but you'd been going outside, releasing outside on that man-to-man -man coverage. This time Desmond ha takes him on a slant cut inside. It, exactly. He, he beat him clean that way, so that really helped. Here again, Todd Plate's going to pick off the ball, but again it was forced because Hunter couldn't follow through. And the pressure is the key. When any quarterback can sit back there and has the time, he's going to hit passes. And especially Hunter. And then you come back, and here's a great catch, great throw by Gerback. Yeah, uh, third down conversion, and Elvis hits uh, Desmond, turns right around, throws it to him the other side. Then Desmond makes a little move and gets about 16, 17 yards there. You're talking about mixing in the run and the pass. Here you mix in the run. Yeah, we had to do that. And then John Vaughn makes a good cut here. Again, takes us down inside to five to set up another touchdown. And this is getting to be a broken record. Wishbone, here comes Alan Jefferson. Yeah, and Bunch and uh, uh, John Vaughn block well there, and we just sealed the inside, and that play was set today, so it was a good situation. Good situation, indeed. 31-6 at halftime. Uh, after the first quarter, you had to think, man, what's going on? And after the, at halftime, you had to say, now that's what we're looking at. Right, and I knew, it, you know, it was going to be a little sticky, particularly when I looked up because, you you know, they played us bump and run last fall. We were the only team that they did that to. They turned around and did it again. And, <laughs> and I you think, weren't expecting it, were you? Yeah, and I think really what happened, they thought if we lay off of Desmond Howard and Derek Alexander, they're going to kill us if we're going to play a man. So we'll bump and run and see if they can hit a few. And we had one in the first half or the first drive that we should have com connected on and we'd have had a touchdown, but that's football. That's football. And also, you know what else is football? Special teams making great plays. We'll be back, take a look at the second half. Before that, though, we'll hear from one of those big special team guys. You gotta have the attitude that every time we go out there, we got we can think we can block it. So I mean, what we do is we just try to we play hard and then we go rush the punt hard and whatever happens happens. Randy Stark was right there. I didn't know if he's gonna pick it up or fall on. He waited on me, so I just picked it up and ran it in. That's a day. Tom Doring talking about the Wolverines in the second half, and really, Mo, you come out with a 31-6 lead. And then at halftime, uh, the Wolverines don't do anything, open up the third quarter. That had to disappoint you. Well, bad third quarter. We picked, we got the ball, picked up two first downs, and then turned the ball, had to punt the ball away to Purdue. Then they sustained a big, long drive in there, went down, and we made them fumble the football. But uh, if you they're going to score, make them go the long way, Jim. That's the important thing. Well, did you know that your guys maybe might, were going to go to sleep a little bit in the start of the third quarter? Well, I, I, I think you got to give Purdue a little credit here, but we made them work the ball down. And as I said, uh, here they get a couple runs that I didn't like. There's Oglesby, their young freshman out of Detroit. This is where he hurt you only a couple of times. Right here. And... Uh, some of that, Jim, is you're dropping deep, and everybody says, you know, jump on them man-to-man, -man, which we were. We were man-to-man -man here. Now watch. When they break the plane, then it takes a long time for people to come up. But again, we're, we're working him a little bit. Then here our defense causes a fumble, and, uh, you know, that's the 17th play in that drive. We come back, get the ball, <laughs> three plays, and punt it away and give them great field position. We should have kept our defense off the field a little bit. But the one thing about your punting game is you haven't allowed anybody back. That's been a big key. Jim, this team blocked two of them on us last year, and I was really nervous about that because they had been good at that, and, and our punting game has been very, very good. It isn't the most beautiful punt sometimes. Then here we fall asleep on a big bomb, which uh, just shouldn't happen. And uh, as I said, that was right after we had to punt him to football. That makes it 31-13. And then you go to work in the fourth quarter and put together that drive that you had to have to really put it away and eat some time. Right. Uh, you know, our defense had been out there a long time, and we wanted to punch him. And I think we warmed down a little bit here. And then uh, Bunch inside, we tried to use him a lot. And there's Derek Alexander on a reverse play. Then we come back and hit Howard again on a little play action. Elvis throws a great ball here, and it's a sign line comeback pattern to Desmond. And you had to do that third and 12 to keep the drive alive, and that was a big play. Yeah, there was no question about that. Then there's Allen again getting his third touchdown of the game. So 38-13, to 13, you, you get the victory over Purdue. And after the last 
the previous games where you'd lost to Michigan State and Iowa, the last two games, wins over Indiana Purdue, have really put this team back into a, a focus, if you will, about this second season you've talked about. Yeah, I think so, and yet I'm, uh, you know, we're going to be anxious to play Illinois, as I know they're going to be anxious to come in here. What about this team? Have they responded the way you have hoped after that Iowa game? When I knew you were a little upset with <clears throat> that whole process and what had happened, and you said we're going to go back to work, everybody's accountable, has it worked the way you wanted it? Well, I think Iowa today proved that they're a pretty good football team to what they did to Illinois, but I'm still disappointed in the one uh, point losses to both of those teams. But um, in some respects, we're a little young, and I'm not making any excuses, but I, I think we're going to keep coming, we're going to get better. And the main thing now is to control the last three games that are not going to be that easy. <laughs> and you're going to get some defensive players back, so it's coming together a little bit for Michigan. Hopefully Chris Hutchinson will be back this week. Milligan got to play a little bit, uh, but you know, we lost two guys last week, Jim. Another uh, <laughs> Dudlar's backup, or second backup, uh, Excuse me, Hutchinson, Gannon Dudlar, a freshman, got hurt, so he couldn't go with a broken toe. And Otis Williams still has that hamstring pull. We should get him back. And a big one, if we can get Chris Hutchinson back, will really help us. Well, you get a week to get ready for the Fighting Illini. But before we take a look at the Fighting Illini, let's take a look at one of the biggest, most important parts of this Michigan football team, the special teams. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. His quickness was outstanding. I mean, to get him scrambling around, because we've seen plays where he's scrambled for 10, 11 seconds, and to chase somebody like that is it's incredible. But I've, I really feel we contained him well, we kept him in the pocket, and we put pressure on him and hit him hard when we got our shot. Special teams play is sometimes the forgotten element of a team's success, but that's not the case at Michigan. The emphasis placed on special teams and the attitude of the kids on the so-called kamikaze squads make the Wolverines special teams very special units indeed. When you're chosen to be on special teams, they always say it's kind of a real privilege to do so, and uh, you never really know it until you're out there and you're uh, really going to be in a different state of mind as you say uh, you're just flying down there going 40 yards full speed on a kickoff team or whatever and uh, it's um, it's an experience it's, it's a lot different than uh, being out there play for play because you know you got to make what you can with what you're given on that certain play special teams encompasses a lot of activities too take trip wellborn for example he's had a great year returning punts but over the last two years he and veda murray are also special teams heroes on the kick blocking unit but as far as trip's concerned he's not the hero at all it's the guys up front they really do the the best job because uh they go in they have to have the pride and the will and determination to get to the kicker and so therefore they create a new line of scrimmage and anybody who creates a new line of scrimmage i mean me and Vader, we have the easy part all we have to do is just jump i mean it's something you know just say go go up there and jump you know hey go up there and dunk the basketball hey jump everybody block the kick as for the coverage aspect of special teams michigan is in a class by themselves take the punt coverage units after the first six games of the season, the Wolverines' net punting average was actually higher than Eddie Ascona's punting average. In other words, Michigan has allowed either no return or minus yards. A statistic like that means the attitude of your special teams is special. Those special 11, and when we come together on the field, it's like a positive energy that goes through each other's minds and body. As soon as we take the field, everybody's ready to go. We go out there with our minds that we're going to knock this ball loose and get the ball back for our offense so they can go in and score a touchdown. And if you don't have that attitude, you're not going to make that very many play big plays at all. I feel the coaches put people in there that they feel can make plays. And uh, they emphasize that every time you go on the field, to expect that you're going to block a punt so you're not surprised if you come free. Expect that you're going to cause a fumble. And uh, I think that's the attitude everyone takes when we take the field. And, it really makes us feel like we're contributing and, and playing a big part in the game. And don't think special teams can't be spectacular either. Just ask kickoff return man Desmond Howard. He shocked Michigan State with a 95-yard touchdown return. And for a guy who's used to scoring TDs on pass catches, his special team scores may even be more fun. 
kickoff probably is more exciting because there's so many people down there and people are, are watching you. And it looks like you're running through a lot of bodies, but really from the, the stands, you can't see the holes that the, act, the actual runners see. So I think it's really not as difficult sometimes as it may seem. But um, it's, like, it's like you just come out of a crowd and uh, it's, it's real exciting because it makes it look like you've done something spectacular. And this year, the special teams have been spectacular for Michigan. And, you know, Mo, that's one of the forgotten parts of the game. We always talk offense, defense, injury, all these things. But, boy, you win the special teams battle game in and game out. You're going to win more than you lose, I think, overall. See, Jim, no one, you know, they don't pay any attention to it until it really hurts you or you do something good with it. It's something taken for granted, like the snap to the punter and all those things. But they do have to take a lot of work. And you were talking about on Saturday, Purdue... Uh, they were ready to block every punt that you guys had, and you, up front, everything went off without a hitch. That's because you emphasized that it. it's... Exactly. It's like when something doesn't happen, you've done something well, good. see what's happening. We aren't punting the ball real far, and we're getting good coverage. So everybody says, well, you can't return on Michigan, so you might as well try to block them. So we're confronted with that. But it, it's working out well, but uh, it's something you, you... If you let up on it one second, it'll come back and kill you. And uh, we still got to keep getting better at it with that phase of the ball. And our kids are taking some pride in it. When you have a day like today, where you get a kickoff like we did, and when you block a punt for a touchdown, now it, it reemphasizes the importance. These kids get a little, you know, they get fired up on this. <laughs> they better be fired up because next week it's a big one. The Illini are coming to Ann Arbor. Don't go away. We'll have the scouting report when Michigan replay continues. Well, that's a big one. You know, that's going to be our, uh, you know, our big game of the season right now. Probably the biggest one to date. And you know, we, and uh, to me, you know, we, we really haven't won a big game yet this year. And this will be, uh, and this will be one to get.